Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're going to be talking about applying to scholarships in 2024. This program is designed to support Hispanic students in STEM through various scholarship opportunities. So I'm going to walk you through the details, including the requirements, how to apply, and the benefits of becoming a SHIP member. My name is Kristen Burke, and I'm the External Relations Administrative Assistant here at SHIP. I focus mainly on scholarships, so if you're ever emailing us, I'm probably your point of contact. Um, I will also be at National Convention, so if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them in person as well. Um, I've been at SHIP since September of 2024, so I'm pretty new here, um, and I'm passionate about diversity and inclusion. I believe in the power of representation in STEM fields, and that's why I'm excited to share information about our scholarship opportunities with you today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at scholarship at ship.org. Here's a quick overview of what we're going to cover today. So I'm going to talk about what is the scholarship program, the opportunities available for 2024 to 2025, the requirements you'll need to meet, the timeline for applications, how to sign up to be a member if you're already not one, and how to apply to scholarship. And finally, the review process and what comes after if you are selected as one of our recipients. The Hispanic community remains underrepresented in STEM, both in higher education and the industry. Many students face financial barriers that can limit their access to opportunities. That's where scholarship comes in. We provide financial assistance to as many students as possible, working with our university and industry partners to ensure a greater representation of Hispanic students in STEM. Now I'm going to talk about the opportunities for scholarships that are available to you right now. Um, there's the SHIP funded scholarships with $300,000 available to over 100 recipients. We have the corporate funded scholarships with over a million dollars um, with 75 plus recipients, as well as individual giving scholarships um, where we have over $25,000 and we will select 10 or more recipients. Now I'm going to go over the requirements that are needed to apply for the scholarship awards. You have to be an active SHIP member. You need to be a full-time student pursuing a STEM degree, unless you're a professional and then you're able to be a half-time student. And uh, there is a minimum GPA requirement of 2.5. And finally, for the scholarships funded by SHIP, there is no citizenship requirement. So all students are encouraged to apply. For corporate scholarships, the requirements are similar to those funded by SHIP but they may vary slightly. So you must be an active SHIP member and a full-time STEM student as well. The minimum GPA requirements may differ because certain corporate sponsors might require a higher GPA than we do. And they also might require you to be a citizen. Um, but don't worry, we use a Common App application. So you can just apply in general, and then we will match you to all of these scholarships that you meet the minimum requirements for. So now I'm going to be talking about membership points of contact. These are the people you can reach out to if you ever have any questions. And as you can see in the bottom corner, I have a link as well as a QR code if you ever want to make um, a, an appointment to meet with them. So Ashley is in charge of undergraduate members as well as student chapters. She is the chapter advisor um, for support and meetings. Anna is the general ex member experience. Um, Diana is the graduate members and faculty. Fernando is SHIP junior members and chapters, and Suzanne is professional membership members and chapters. Now I'm going to review how to sign up to be a SHIP member if you are not already one. So you're going to go to our website. Um, so you can just Google like SHIP and it will, this page will pop up. Um, as you can see in the top corner, I have circled here, join. So you're going to click on join. Once you click on join, it's going to take you to this page. Um, once you get to this page, you're going to scroll down and here you'll be able to find all of our membership types. So you can see the SHIP Junior, so those are people that are not currently in college. So say you're about to graduate high school and you're interested in our scholarship opportunities for you, you would join SHIP Junior. Undergraduate memberships, um, so if you are an undergrad and trying to apply, you can go here and click join now, as you can see circled on the screen. And graduate memberships, um, so those are people that are in grad school. And there's also professional memberships. So if you're interested in signing up, this is where you go. And then you select the membership that fits you. And on the last slide, I showed you it said join now. You'll click that and it will say like not a registered 
user yet, you'll type in your email address, and then you'll follow all the steps on the screen to sign up from there. For those of you that are not SHIB members, this is why you might want to consider joining. You have access to over $1.5 million in scholarship offerings. We have internship, fellowships, and co-op opportunities available to you, exclusive access to the SHIP Career Center, tips for resume writing and interview preparation, career and professional development resources, as well as leadership training and networking. And when you want to go to our national convention and other regional events, you get a discounted res registration. So some of you may know that we in the past have had the application open um, just year round. Instead of that, we are switching to two separate cycles. So I'm going to review the timeline for both now. So our applications are currently open um, and these are applications for the spring 2025 semester. Um, so those open on October 1st. Coming up soon, we have our national convention in Anaheim, California on October 31st. On November 15th is when we're going to close the spring 2025 semester applications. So you need to make sure that you have everything completed prior to that date. And I'm going to go over those requirements here soon. On December 18th, um, that is when award notices start to come out. But don't worry if you don't get a notice right on December 18th. Sometimes there's a delay. So don't freak out and start emailing us and saying like, did I not get selected? Sometimes it might take a few days. Um, on January 8th, disbursement documents are due, so if you receive the, the notification on December 18th, you need to have all of those documents in by January 8th. This gives you time to collect all those documents, um, considering it is like the holiday season, we do give you a little bit more time. However, it's really important that you are submitting those all on time, otherwise it will potentially lead to you forfeiting your scholarship. And then on January 13th, disbursement will begin. Okay, now here's the timeline for football 2025 semester support. So the applications are going to open on February 14th and they're going to close on April 18th. So don't wait till the last second. There's a lot of students that um, will wait till the last second and then you don't have time to finish your application because you don't have everything ready. And just be prepared. Um, I'm going to tell you everything that you need in this video. So just get those things in order and don't wait to the last minute because you never know, you might miss out on an opportunity because you did. Uh, on July 14th, award notices are going to begin. On August 4th, all those disbursement documents are due. Um, so if you were selected, we'll send you all of the things that you need to submit and then you have until August 4th to submit all those things. And then on August 7th, we're going to start sending out that money if you submitted all those documents in time. The same thing as before. Um, if you don't submit those documents in time, it could lead to you forfeiting that scholarship. So just make sure that you're um, keeping an eye on your inbox and everything like that and following up. So once you know that you meet the scholarship requirements and you have an active SHIP membership, it's time to gather your application materials for scholarship. This includes your personal information, your academic records, as well as any supporting documents that highlight your accomplishments. So when you apply, here's a checklist of what you're going to need. You'll need your name, contact information, demographic and financial information, academic information, including transcripts, your resume and a professional headshot, essays highlighting your goals and experiences, and any links to any um, exciting projects or projects you're particularly proud of, and accomplishments that you, accomplishment that you want to showcase. So to delve a little bit more into detail about the financial section, um, we will need to know whether or not you applied to FAFSA, what is your expected family contribution, how many people are in your household, um, your total household income, and the employment details that in fact that impact your financial status. So we need to know if you're you have no job, you're part time, you're full time. For the academic information, we're going to need to know the university or institution that you're attending, your current GPA. If you're an incoming freshman, we'll refer to your GPA of your high school, as well as your degree and your major, your academic level. So if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, graduate student, PhD student, um, if you're full-time or part-time status, and we'll need to know um, what high school you went to, your expected graduation, and your transcript. So the transcript is something that you definitely want to um, request with enough time. I know some institutions have it um, where you just get an email to you instantly, but some places it's not like that. So you need to be prepared and have that in order. 
So you'll need to have your resume and professional headshot as well. So your resume, just make sure that it highlights all of the things that you're doing in college um, and anything that you're particularly proud of, any organizations or things like that that will set you apart from everyone else um, are included on your resume. We're going to ask for a professional headshot. This does not mean uploading a selfie that you like of yourself or anything like that. Um, there's a lot of times where we will use your professional headshot and we will use it to promote scholarships. So we need it to be a good quality photo and not something that includes other people, not something where it's just a cutout of you. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're submitting it, that other people will see this um, and it could potentially be used for our marketing materials. So you don't want to use something embarrassing. Um, yeah. In addition, you'll be asked to highlight your projects and or accomplishments. So we want you to submit these things like to links to your videos, like if you have a video of something you did throughout the semester, PDF files of these projects that you've completed, um, any research opportunities you've been a part of, um, any photos of you, like so this photo to the left, you can see um, they're working in a robotics lab, so anything like that, or photos of you at a ship event, of you at national convention, of you with your chapter, um, and any time that you volunteered. This is something that's really important, and a lot of people choose to skip over it. It's something that, first of all, sets you apart from other people, and also it's something that we use to send to the people that funded that scholarship. So say that you are selected as a recipient for a corporate scholarship. This is something that we can send them and they can feel like they get to know you. Um, they can know what they're funding, like what you're doing on campus. Um, and then it allows you to create a relationship with those corporate sponsors. So how and where to apply. Um, I have a link right here where you can go and register for an account. This is a different platform that we have used in the past, so it's no longer on Smarter Select. It's on a new platform called AwardSpring. Um, this platform is a lot more user friendly um, and it should make it easier for you to apply. Um, I'm going to put this link in the caption as well, so you don't have to type it out. And our application is open from now until November 15th. So like I said before, make sure you get all of those materials that I went over in order now and apply early. So this is the review process um, from October to November. We're recruiting reviewers for the scholarships. Um, we are then from November 16th, so right after the application closes until December 3rd, our reviewers are reading everything, um, scoring everything, and then we get those um, reports from them on December 3rd when they're finished with everything. And this is what we use to select who um, receives those awards. Um, so award notifications begin on the 18th of December. However, if you don't receive a notification right away, as I said before, don't panic, there might be a slight delay. Also, you wanna make sure that you add us to your contacts um, so that you can avoid the email potentially going to your spam. There is several times where a student has been awarded a scholarship and they've never gotten back to us. So that is money that you're not going to receive if you um, you know, that you don't see the email and you don't follow through with all of those forms. Um, it's really unfortunate because obviously you were selected and you deserve the scholarship and um, it's a technical error, but the email is the only way we have to reach you. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, even if you just apply and you don't know if you've got it yet, you might receive an email from us. So just go ahead and do that. So these are the things that you'll need to submit if you are selected. The online form will ask for a media release, your transcript, as well as your academic verification. Um, so these are things that we use to verify that you are a full-time student, your GPA that you applied with, and that you are still enrolled in the university. Um, you will also be asked to submit your W-9, which is a tax document, um, or W-8 if you're an international student or an undocumented student. Please make sure that you sign and date this. You need to scroll down on the W-9. A lot of people overlook it. Um, it's something that will just delay the disbursement process. So just make sure that you're paying attention and filling out all the things that you need to. Um, in addition, you also will be asked to share any projects or photos. Um, like I mentioned before, we really encourage this since it's something that we share with your donor. Um, it can really help them get to know you. We will also encourage them to continue donating to us um, because they feel more involved with you. Um, so please do that because that's something that could help people out in the future as well. You will also need to be um, to write a thank you letter to the donor. 
talk about how the scholarship impacted you in a note to other ship members. And um, something else I want to highlight is that the money comes directly to you. It does not go to your university. So you do not have to tell your university that you were awarded with a scholarship um, in case that you're worried it might um, impact your financial aid or anything like that. It will go directly to your bank account, um, which you will set up directly with SHIP. So thank you so much for taking the time to um, listen to this presentation today. I hope that it was helpful. I hope I answered all your questions. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below and I will answer them. You can also contact us at scholarship at ship.org as well, as I mentioned earlier, so that you can ask us any questions. Um, if you run into any issues when you're applying or anything like that, please feel free to reach out. Thanks.